so let's quickly now look at the definition of what says day book or journal looks like we said that it is a book of original entry in which credit sales are recorded before posting to the ledgers i said it is simply a book of original entry used to record daily sales on credit it is centered on the following number one sales of fixed asset is excluded from the book number two Cash transactions must not be recorded. Number three, it is not part of the double entry. Number four, transactions are not transactions are posted based on sales invoices. Now let me bring the message home so that you will appreciate the topic. Now we are saying that it is the book of original entry because transactions are expected to be recorded in this book before they are posted to the ledger. What I mean is that whenever a transaction takes place, there is a book that is used to, to record the transaction depending on the nature of the transaction. So when, since this particular book is exclusively for daily sales, or daily sales on credit, every sales you make on daily basis on credit, they are expected to be recorded in this book before they are posted to the what? To the ledger. And then I also pointed it out that this, this book is centered on number one. We say sales, sales of what? We say sales of fixed asset is excluded, is excluded from the book. Now, what I mean by sales of fixed asset is that if you are in a, you have a company and you have some items that have been categorized as assets. Now, these items that have been categorized as assets, sometimes you may want to dispose them. We call it disposal of assets. You may want to sell them. The sales of this asset are not expected to be in the sales day book. They are not expected to be in the what sales day book. Well, whenever an asset is sold out, if you sell this asset on cash, then the proceed of that asset, this the money that is that is generated from the sales of this asset. That money will go to the cash book if it is sold on cash, if it is on check, it goes to the bank. And then the corresponding entry will be in the um, it will be in this asset account. For instance, if you sell fixed as if you sell a um, plant and machinery, once plant and machinery is sold out for cash, that amount of money that is sold out will reduce the cash. And so the two accounts that will be affected is the cash book and the what? The asset account. So now let's look at it. said cash transaction must not be recorded. The second thing is that if indeed this book is exclusively for credit sales, daily credit sales, then there will be no point or there will be no place for what? Cash transaction. Cash transactions are transactions that you pay instantly when there is a transfer of rights or ownership with a payment, instantaneous payment, then such transaction is called cash transaction. They are what? Not recorded in the um, sales day book. And then the next one is that it is not part of the double entry principle or the double entry. Now, it has become a kind of, it has become a fundamental um, language or it has become a, a kind of um, anthem in accounting. The double entry principle has become an anthem. And any, any average accounting student or accountant should be able to know what double entry principle is because it serves as a foundation of, of every bookkeeping system. So, but there are exceptions, and sales day book is one of such exceptions. In as much as we know that bookkeeping is actually benched or is hinged on a double entry principle when preparing sales day book you do not exp you do not observe that principle the principle states that for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa but in preparing sales day book there is an exception you don't observe the double entry principle that is why we said it is not part of the double entry um, is not part of the double entry. Then the last but not the least is that transactions are posted based on sales invoices. We said it are posted based on what? Sales invoices. Invoices are just evidence to prove that transactions are taking place. Basically, purchase or 
um, sales. So since we are talking about sales day book, the invoice is an incoming invoice. This incoming invoice is what we call documentary or objective evidence that substantiates or proves the reality of a particular sales. So this one we say it is recorded based on the invoices. By the time we look at the practical example, you will see a column in this book that will spell out the number of sales that we have carried out within the period under consideration. Let's quickly make progress. Now we want to look at the procedures for posting this, uh, for posting transactions into the sales day book. Now the procedures for posting include number one, invoices are typed as and when sales occur. Please, it is very, very recommended that whenever, whenever sales are carried out, invoices are expected to be what? To be typed. One, what, what we mean by invoices is that sometimes the sales might not be just a particular sale. It might just be different categories of sales. That is why the invoice is carried S. So for every sale that is carried out, it should go with a particular invoice. And we have said in our previous, in one of our videos, that invoice has some specifications or some qualification, things that you must find on an invoice. One, you must find the quantity of goods, you must find the discount, you must find the price, you must find the terms of what? Payment. For every invoice, invoice must spell out one, the quantity of goods, number two, must the price of the goods, number three, it must spell out the, the discount, and then number four, it must also spell out the word, the terms of payment. And then I said, the next one is that sales day book is entered daily. This is not something that you enter weekly or monthly. It is something that is entered what? Daily. As you sell today, you record. You sell tomorrow, you record. It's something that must be what? Is a daily routine. As long as the sales are coming on daily basis, you record them on daily basis. And then the next one is that sales account in the general ledger is credited with the total. By the time you sum up everything that you have sold for that particular day, the total should be transferred to the world, to this, the general ledger. The general ledger is just the principal book of account, the ledger that houses all other transactions. So in the ledger account, when you see sales account, whatever you have at the end of the sales day book, sum them together and then credit it to the what? sales ledger and then the second the last one is a customer's account in the double entry system is debited whenever you have you 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 sold out goods remember in double entry principle we have explained in one of our videos that in double entry principle you always you give to decrease and then you receive to increase so because we are selling the item that we are selling is going out of us. So because it's going out of us, we are the one that is giving. So we must be what? Credited. That's why we said debit the receiver and credit the giver. Because we are the one that is selling, we are giving out item. We are giving out values. We are giving out money. And we have to be what? Credited. But when it comes to the customer's account, the customer needs to be what? Debited. Because the customer is the one receiving. Now, I want to point out something. Why do we need to keep an account of a customer? The only reason why an account of a customer is needed is because we want to keep record of the people that are owing us and the people that we are owing. Ordinarily, if this, has, if, if this, if this was a cash book, there will be no need to keep record of the customer. Of course, when there is a transfer of rights or ownership of an item, once the transfer is concluded and cash or a value is given in exchange, the, the contract ends there. But as long as the transfer is not effected with certain payments, there is need for you to keep a record of this person for reference purposes. So if you are opening a, a personal, if you are opening an account in the name of the individual, because the individual is receiving the item, the individual needs to be what? Debited. Why you, who is the giver, who, you, who is the seller, you are the supplier, 
you are going to be what credited now if the customer is to keep a book in your name then the customer will have to now debit himself and then credit you because you are the one that gave the items to the customer now this we are going to look at how to now post these transactions how to post it now in the, the processes that are involved we said total sales day book will be transferred to the credit side of the sales account in the general ledger and the personal and the personal account debited i just explained that that whenever you have concluded this book you are going to sum up all the sales and then we are going to sum up all these sales and then two accounts will be affected please we do not apply double entry on sales um, day book what we do we just need this book to know the amount of money or the, the value that is realized from credit sales by the time you are able to ascertain the value then that value must must go into two different accounts one it must go into your own account and it must go into the account of the person from which you you sold out the goods to and then we have said that that person's account must be debited and then your own personal account will be what credited that's why we said that the total of sales day book will be transferred to the credit side of the sales account in the general ledger that's your own ledger and then the personal account will be what debited now the act of entering the customer's account is known as what is what we call posting so when we talk about posting posting is simply that process that is involved or the act that is involved in entering the transaction into the customer's account in accounting we call it posting so by the time you you enter the transaction into the customer's account you have posted the transaction into the customer's account i think there is need for us to also understand the concept of trade discount since we have said that discount is part of what should be seen on an invoice because if we don't understand the place of discount by the time we begin to look at examples you may not appreciate how we are able to manipulate or how we are able to calculate discount around the transaction now we said trade discount this is the allowance of the selling price or the catalog price of a good supply it is normally given to the buyers by the supplier or manufacturers trade discount are simply a percentage deduction from the retail price therefore no entry for it should be made in the double entry records what am i saying you remember the double entry record is a secondary need the press the, the primary need is to prepare the sales day book by the time you prepare the, the sales day book you have ascertained the total amount of money or value realized from sales now by the time you are not doing the posting what we are saying is that the, the discount is not needed in the posting the only thing that is needed is just that total amount that is involved you post it to the the customer's account and then you post it to your own account but in the sales day book there is a place for trade discount now before i go 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 before i explain further let me explain what i mean by deductions now basically discount is a reduction discount is simply a, a reduction that you you enjoy when you go to buy from your customer your customer can decide to reduce the money the value or the amount or the cost you are expected to pay one to encourage you to to you know to, uh, to encourage you to, to to buy more to become committed to the business or to even help you to have more more profit you know or some other time they can give you discount to appreciate your commitment if you have been a committed customer for a very long time they can appreciate you so but discount are actually divided into two we have cash discount and we have trade discount cash discount facilitate prompt payment cash discount is given when they want you to pay at certain dates you are owing somebody twenty thousand, and the person want that money maybe next week he can tell you this twenty thousand. if you can pay when is the next week pay ten thousand that 10,000 deduction is called cash discount and it is given because the person wants you to pay that money next week. But when it comes to trade discount, 
Trade discount goes with quantity of goods purchased. That is why in this definition I said it is it is giving it is taken out of what we call catalog what price. Is something that is given basically by suppliers or manufacturers. They, if you are buying 10 carton, they can say if you buy 20 carton, you are going to pay for 18 carton. Sometimes you can see people selling all these hawkers. They go around, they sell, you know, some items. They say, buy one and take one free. You know, buy two and take one free. All of those things come together. They constitute what we call discount. So discount plays a very important role, especially trade discount in what? Credit. And there's a problem. The challenge is that since the trade discount goes with the with the with the transaction, it goes with the goods, not the cash. The the trade discount ends with the what the um the sales day book. It doesn't go out of that place. That's where it ends. And the sales day book is expected to give you a clear picture of the amount of value that is given as trade discount. Now we have said, we have explained what sales day book is. We have explained that sales day book is a book used for daily um, sales on credit. And we've also explained discount. We've also looked at how to post transactions and we also look at the procedures. Now let's quickly take a look at the format. How does it look like to prepare a sales day book? Now, sales day book, if you want to prepare a sales day book, sales day book has it like this. Let me assume I'm preparing sales day book in the name of um, Zigmatic. You say sales day book of what? Zigma Tech. Nigeria, let's take it Nigeria Limited. All right. Now, this is the company. This is the book we are preparing, sales day book of Sigma Tech Nigeria Limited. Now, you come under it, you rule a straight line. It has a column for dates. This is a column for dates. It has a column for particulars. It has a column for what we call folio and then details and total. So these are the columns involved. The first one is what? Is date. The second one is what? Particulars. The third one is what we call the folio. The fourth one is what we call the details. And the last one is what we call the total. So now, when you see something like this, this is what we call the says the book so with this division now you'll be able to appreciate you'll be able to appreciate every transaction now the date column is used to record the date under which the transaction took place it's used to record the date the period under which the transaction took place why the particulars is there to describe the transaction the people that you sold the goods to who are the companies that comes to this company to buy our items? You list the name. And then the items, the goods, or the quantity of goods that is sold out. Then the folio will give you, you know, a picture of a particular sales from the other. Like sales number one, if we sold girls' goods to Dangote group of companies, that particular transaction will come with a description. Every invoice will come with a number. That number will describe or will differentiate that transaction from when we sell it to, maybe we sell it to another company, company ABC. If it is ABC Limited, you see ABC Limited has another description. So folio is there to differentiate transaction one from transaction two. And then the detail, whatever you have here, whatever you, you, you have here, it will be now calculated and then the sum will be given. At the end of the day, you now sum up everything and then your total now become what will be transferred into the general ledger as you have said. Let's take some, some transactions and then we represent it on this um, sales ledger. I will have to wipe this and then give us some transactions that will really, really guide us. Now, let's say 
that um, on the following transactions, the following transactions, it was extracted from the books of Zigmater. Limited. Now, on the third of May, twenty twenty two, sold out, sold four carton of Indomie to ABC Limited at. 1,000 Naira each. And then we said to Zik, the ABC at 1,000 Naira each. And then we said on the 8th of June 2022, sold out, we sold 10, um, 10 cartons of Biscuits to Peterson, Peterson Limited at two thousand each, two thousand naira each, with ten percent discount. Now. Look at this transaction. You are required to prepare the sales day book from these two transactions. Now, we sold our four carton of Indomie to ABC Limited at 1,000 each. That's 3rd of May, 2022. 8th of June, sold our 10 cartons of biscuits toward Peterson Limited at 2,000 each with 10% worth discount. Now, if you want to prepare your um, sales day book, you come up, write your sales day book of what? Zigma Tech. Zigma Tech, Nigeria Limited. All right. And then you rule your line. You have a column for date. Have a column for particulars. Have a column for what? Have a column for folio. And then you have a column for what? For details and for total. So you have dates here. You have particulars here. You have your folio here. You have your details here. And then you have your what? Total here. This is how it looks like. All right. Now let's look at the first transaction. We said. 3rd of May 2022. Come here, you write 3rd of May 2022. Who are the people? You write A, B, C, Limited. You first of all write A, B, C, what? Limited. Now, what happened that day? We sold out in Domi. Just write four cartons. You write four cartons of what? In Domi. In Domi. At, at what? At 1,000 Naira each. All right. So if you are multiplying, it's going to give you four. You're going to give you four times 1,000. 1,000 times four. This is zero, 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 four. It's going to give you what? 4,000. So your 4,000 will be here. You write your 4,000 here. Can you see now? This is 4,000 Naira. Now, assuming we had some other transactions that transpired on the 3rd of May, if we had some other transaction, it will come, it will follow suit. But because on the 3rd of May, this, this, this is the only transaction that took place that day, then it will now, you are now going to close this particular part of the transaction. And then as you close it, your total is going to be what? One, two, three, four thousand that way. 
Their total is going to be what? 4,000. You see now, their line is, run, is run from here down to this level. And then the transaction is 4,000 Naira. Now, the next transaction is this one. So, this one sold 10 cartons of biscuit to Peterson Limited at 2,000 each. You simply do your multiplication. You come down and do and repeat the process. Guys, this one happened on the 8th of June. The, the date is 8th of June 2022. Who did we sell out this, um, this carton? We sold it out to who? To um, Peterson. So you write your Peterson. Peterson Limited. What did we sell? We sold out 10 cartons of biscuits at what? 2,000 Naira each. So you are going to do your multiplication. You are going to multiply 2,000 by what? By 8. Eh? You're going to multiply 2,000 by 10. So you have 10 here. So if you are doing this multiplication, even without following these procedures, the normal long multiplication, you know that 10 times this is 20,000. But let's confirm. 0, we multiply here. 0, 0 here. 0, 0 here. 0, 0 here. 0 here is also what? 0. 1 times 0 is 1. Is 0, rather. 1 times 0 is what? 0. 1 times 0 is 0. And 1 times 2 is 2. So you now have 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. So what you are going to get there is what? 20,000. So 20,000 is what you are going to get. But there is something you need to understand. You write your 20,000 here. This your 20,000 that you are writing here is not going to be the total of the transaction. They said that 10% worth discount. You give out 10% discount. So what you are going to do at this point, you are going to calculate 10% discount, 10% discount on 20,000. Okay. Now, we have multiplied 22,000 by the number of cartons that is sold out and then we arrive at 20,000. But they said that with 10% discount. So your 10% discount, you are going to charge your 10% discount on this 20,000. So you come on there and write 10 over 100 times 20 over 1. Let's bring it up here. It will be 10 over 100 times what? 20,000 over 1. This 0, we cancel this 0. This 0, we also cancel this 0. You'll be left with what? 2,000. So this 2,000 is what will not be deducted from this 20,000. It's going to be 20,000 minus 2,000. So this 2,000, you are subtracting it from 20,000. Let's do the subtraction here. So we'll appreciate what we are doing. Now 20,000, 20,000 minus what? 2,000. This is 0, 0, 0. You know, two cannot be subtracted from here. So you borrow one from, from this. When you borrow one from two, it will give you 10. 10 minus two is what? Eight. Then you'll be left with one here. So what you have here is what? 18,000. So 18,000 is what will be written here. That's going to be your value for here. It's going to be what? 18,000. So if you add 18,000 to 4,000, you are going to have what we are going to 18,000. Let's do the addition. 18,000, 18,000 plus 4,000. This is 0, 0, 0. 8 plus 4 is 12. And then we have 8 plus 4 is 12. And then we have um, right 2. You carry 1. And then we have 1. It's going to be what? 22,000. So your 22,000 here is what we call the total sales. So your total sales for the period now is what? 22,000. That is a value that will be now taken to the customers, to your own account. And it will also be taken to the customer account. How much will be taken to ABC account? 4,000. 
So this 4,000 is what will be debited in the account of ABC. And then 18,000 will be debited in the account of what? Peterson. But in the general ledger, what will be debited in, in, in our own account in the general journals is what we, is 22,000. This 22,000 has a breakdown of ABC Limited and the what? Peterson Limited. This is just the sketch or the summary of how to prepare um, um, sales day book. Now, the discount here, it will end here. Like we have said, the discount will end here. It will not go with Peterson into the account and it will not go with what? ABC into his account. ABC, didn't, we didn't send it to ABC on credit. So having explained that, let's quickly go to our exam guide to see we can get some questions, related questions that will help us to further explain what we are talking about. Once you click on your exam guide, you see the option displayed on the screen and then you click on the subject matter account. We are doing financial accounting. Once you click there, you see options for years, the particular year you are looking for. Is it 20, 29, 20, whatever you choose the particular year, the particular questions you are looking, the particular year, it will have the questions you are looking for and then you click on that particular year. But for this, for the sake of this lesson, we are going to look at, we are going to choose random. We will click on random because at this point, we just want to get all the questions under this particular topics in the various years. Then our, our to topics, our um, topics of interest is subsidiary books and source document. Once you have done that, you can now click on get started and the, the, the questions that you need will just pop up. They say the balance on the sales ledger control account at the end of the accounting. Accounting year represent the total of this. This is a control account. We are not going to look at this. And the which of the following book, which of the following is both subsidiary books and we are looking at a question that can really, um, which of the following is not contained in a journal? Which of the following is not contained in a journal? Even if we have not explained journal, because this has to do with, we are talking about transferring this, this to our general journals. Now, when you look at journals, journals have dates, Journals have description of the transaction. Journals have the folio number, but it doesn't have address. If you look at this now, this is a type of journals. You know, it's, it's called sales day book or sales journals. Look at this. You have the column for date. You have the column for particulars. You have the column for folio. You have the column for details and what total. Now, I didn't explain what folio is. In this case now, Sometimes you see something that they will write like SL and you see SL. This LL means sales number or sales ledger. And it's called sales ledger. It represents the particular sales. So it is called sales what? Ledger. This one now, this is where, when the number is written, this is where you can find this transaction in the general ledger. So they ask, the question is, which of the following is not contained in a journal? The answer there is the address of the customer. And then let's take the last question. They said, in which of the following is purchase of fixed asset on credit first recorded? It cannot be, um, it cannot be cash book. It cannot be purchase journal. It's going to be what? Um, journal proper. It's going to be recorded in the journal proper before it will be taken to the general journals. All right. So far, we have looked at the what we call subsidiary books and um, source document. We have explained what it's all about. We have said that um, sales day book is part of the subsidiary book this part of the division of subsidiary books. And then we said it's used to record daily transactions on credit, daily sales on credit. And then we've also looked at the procedures. We've looked at the discount and we've looked at how to post the transaction.